A chaotic scene outside of an Indianapolis nightclub overnight. A man gunned down as partygoers let out of the bar. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Also, a special day for one of the city's biggest hospitals, the Milestone, they're celebrating today at Eskenazi Health. And we have a nice finish to your weekend. More sunshine today, but we are tracking a chance of rain for tomorrow. I'll have the details. From Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News Weekend Sunrise starts now. And good morning. Welcome to Weekend Sunrise. It is Sunday, December 7th. I'm Jeremy Brilliant in for Naomi, along with Kelly Green. 9 o'clock, 29 degrees out there, inching up just a little bit, a little bit warmer, but... We shouldn't expect a warm day, but at least a sunny one. Yes, and that is definitely some good news. It was frosty this morning. Temperatures in the mid-20s starting to climb a bit, but we'll get to near normal later this afternoon. But it, the good news is it is going to be a much brighter day than it was yesterday. We are starting to see some high clouds streaming in. This is the next weather maker that will push in tomorrow, but we'll take advantage of some of these blue skies across our weather bug network. This is from Greenfield. Just a nice start there with some sunshine and our HD sky cam showing a beautiful sun there as well. It turned 29 degrees. Winds are onto the east northeast at 10 miles per hour. And we do have a wind chill value making it feel like it is 20 degrees. Check this out. This is 24 hour temperature change. Temperatures have been running around 10 degrees below what we did yesterday. So certainly significantly colder today with air temperatures right now at 28 in Greensburg, 26 in Marion, 27 in Kokomo and future track wind chill values will still be in the 20s throughout the morning hours and then only into the low 30s later this afternoon. So it will be a bit cool out there today, but at least we'll enjoy some sunshine. Temperatures climbing into the upper 30s, close to normal for this time of year. I do have details on the rain that will move in tomorrow as well a chance of a few flurries coming up in your forecast. New on weekend sunrise, Saturday night club goers had to walk through crime scene tape on their way out after a man was gunned down outside. This happened just after 2 this morning at the corner of East 38th Street and North Elizabeth Street near Shadeland and 38th. Officers say a man was shot in a parking lot near the Silhouette Club as groups of people were leaving. Medics say he had been shot multiple times, died at the scene. Dozens of people were walking through the area at the time, creating a unique challenge for police. It was a little chaotic there for a while, but we had enough officers here to control it and move people away from where the crime scene was. Just minutes later, another victim that police believe was involved in the shooting showed up at Community Hospital East. They say he was uncooperative and left the hospital shortly thereafter. No arrests have been made in that case. Meanwhile, Metro Police still searching for suspects after Friday night's shootings. The first happened just before midnight at the Port of Call Apartments on the west side near 465 and Rockville Road. Officers found 36-year-old Latasha Elliott Strickland on the living room floor unconscious. She'd been shot and later died at that scene. Investigators say there were more than a dozen witnesses at the apartment, but right now no arrests have been made. And just a few hours after that, shots fired at a liquor store and tavern on the east side. At least one of those shots hit 37-year-old David Thompson in the stomach. That happened inside the rural inn. Officers found him collapsed on the pavement near the back door. Thompson went to Eskenazi Hospital in critical condition. Again, no word yet this morning on a suspect in either of those cases. It is a day of remembrance. Governor Mike Pence has asked that all flags be flown at half-staff to honor the lives lost in the attacks on Pearl Harbor 73 years ago today. On December 7, 1941, just before 8 a.m., 400 Japanese warplanes attacked the home port of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. 2,400 Americans were killed, another 1,200 wounded, as countless warships were either destroyed or badly damaged. The attack is what pulled the U.S. into World War II, and today World War II vets and Pearl Harbor survivors will attend a ceremony overlooking the memorial to the USS Arizona battleship that sank during that attack. Well, a celebration will take place today. It's been a year since one of the city's largest hospitals opened its doors for the first time. This morning, Sunrise reporter Kerry Klein joins us live from outside Eskenazi Hospital with how employees are reflecting on this first year. Yeah, good morning, Jeremy. Uh, one year ago this weekend, I was actually standing just a half a block away down there at the old Wishard Hospital on a cold 
Bridget morning, very similar to this one, as the almost ceremonial transfer took place of patients from Wishard to the brand new Eskenazi Hospital. It was at that time that a team of doctors and nurses worked to transfer the 150 patients using a caravan of ambulances from Wishard Hospital across that parking lot to the new Sydney and Lois Eskenazi Hospital. Even the U.S. Naval Reserve and National Guard volunteered their services to help. Inside Eskenazi, a command center jam-packed with people monitoring every logistical aspect of that move. Well, in the last year, a lot has happened at the new hospital. They've seen an increase in patients, but more importantly, they've expanded their services aimed at healing the body and the soul. There's probably nothing that lights up more areas of the brain than music, especially if you're the one playing it. And with the, um, through the generosity of Mary, Marianne Tobias, who do, first donated a concert grand piano and then endowed this fabulous mu music program, we're bringing music into the environment now to, to enliven uh, the environment again for our patients and for those who care for them and who, goes, who love them and are coming to visit. And in addition to things like the music, there's also art and nature that Eskenazi has really worked on to talk about preventing health problems that are faster curing the health problems. For example, there's a common area in between the buildings here, an outdoor area where not only the staff members can gather, but also patients if they're well enough, their family members, and even people from the neighboring IUPUI campus. They come together, they have lunch, conversation, or sometimes just to take a deep breath and relax. Well, coming up in our next half hour here on Weekend Sunrise, we're going to talk about what else Eskenazi Hospital has done here in the last year that's actually generating a lot of thank you notes. Plus, you'll hear from a patient. For now, reporting live downtown, Kerry Klein, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks so much, Kerry, on this first year anniversary of Eskenazi. A group of local soldiers will begin their tour of duty today. About 160 National Guardsmen based in Franklin are deploying to Kuwait to conduct engineering operations there. They will leave this morning after a send-off ceremony at 10 a.m. at Indian Creek High School in Trafalgar. The public is invited to see them off. Like always in these efforts, um, there is, there's risk. Mission to rescue an American hostage from Al-Qaeda militants. It ended in tragedy. Photojournalist Luke Summers was killed by his captors during that U.S.-led raid in Yemen. Summers had been held captive there for more than a year. President Obama said today that he ordered the mission because Summers was believed to be in imminent danger. Another hostage, a teacher from South Africa, was also killed in that operation. The threat of terrorists both here and abroad was discussed yesterday at the University of Indianapolis. That's where former Indiana Senator Richard Lugar held his 38th annual symposium for tomorrow's leaders. Students from across the state weighed in on national and global issues. But uh, to get to your question, I think it's important to point out what the challenges are to the United States of America, what the challenges are going to be for these students and their families as they get married and have children and grandchildren. In other words, what their heritage will be and what the responsibility is to that heritage. A total of 450 high school juniors from Indiana were selected to attend this year's symposium. And it's a very important game day for the Colts over in Cleveland. A win today could potentially catapult them into the playoffs. Should they down the Browns and the Houston Texans fall, the Colts could be AFC champions by the end of the day. Another storyline to follow, four players and the Colts will be playing their former team for the first time. Trent Richardson, Mike Adams, Kel Jackson, and Josh Cribbs are all former Browns players. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to have much more with Iowa sports anchor Rich Nye, who is traveling with the team. We're going to have that in just a few minutes. And one of the things Rich said yesterday from Cleveland was there was some sun, which is unheard of <laughs> yes. in Cleveland in the winter. Right. I mean, they get a lot of snow there, too. So to get sunshine and dry conditions, beautiful. it's going to be great. Go Colts. It's going to be a great afternoon. I'll have the details on that forecast. But we are cold here at home, starting off a little frosty, 28 in Nineveh. 28 in Rossville and 28 degrees in Newcastle. A bright day today, but I am tracking some rain for tomorrow. I'll have the details on that too. And the midterm election may have been more than a month ago, but it finally came to an end last night. We'll tell you who took Louisiana's contested Senate seat.
The 2014 midterm election officially ended last night with another victory for Republicans. GOP challenger Bill Cassidy defeated Democratic Senator Mary Landrow in the, Landrow in the uh, Louisiana Senate runoff. The win gives the Republican Party another victory in the final election of the 2014 midterms. Landrow fought to make the election a referendum on her own performance rather than President Obama. Cassidy portrayed his candidacy as a way for voters to vote against the president. On November the 4th, the American people sent a message. They sent a message that they did not like the direction our country was going in. Now you in this room, our state, is the exclamation mark on that message. Republicans have now gained nine seats in the U.S. Senate, giving them 54 seats total. Two people died. Twelve others were treated for carbon monoxide poisoning at a New Jersey multi-use building. Officials say it happened on the second floor, which houses a recording studio. Two people who were working in the same room were found dead. Twelve people had symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Nine had to be hospitalized. The source of that CO leak is still under investigation. Another powerful typhoon hits the island nation of the Philippines. More than one million people were evacuated ahead of that storm. The typhoon brought howling winds that toppled trees and power poles and cut off communications. People awoke on Sunday morning to destroy buildings, flooded streets, debris on the roads and in the water. There are no reports, though, of casualties or injuries at this point. And it was superstorms like that that had hundreds of climate activists taking to the beach in Peru. They formed a human banner to spread awareness about global warming. After mapping out the design, the crowd lined up to create the shape of a tree with the words peoples and rights on the top and forests alive at the bottom. The UN is currently holding talks on climate change in Peru. It's 914, 29 degrees. We had kind of a gloomy gray day yesterday. We and we're looking forward to a prettier day today, but a little chillier. It will still be chilly. Yesterday the winds were higher, mm -hmm. so the wind chills will actually kind of average out about the same. Okay. But uh, at least we will have sunshine. Mentally it will feel warmer. Yes, okay. I do think that's a, yes. that's a fact. And we all can use a little dose of sunshine now and then, and we're going to get that today. So the clouds are starting to filter in a bit. Just some high clouds, and it's all coming off of this next system. And we do have a clipper system that will push in tomorrow. That will bring us a chance of rain, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But let's take in a lot of this blue sky in Kokomo from our weather bug network. A great start there. Definitely has been a crisp start all across central Indiana. Temperatures starting to rebound a bit. It's currently 29 degrees in Indianapolis. Winds are out of the east northeast at 10 miles per hour, but it still feels like it's about 20. Now our 24 hour temperature change has been running about 10, even 12 degrees colder this morning than yesterday. So certainly a big difference with those air temperatures running around 25 in Richmond, 26 in Marion, 27 in Lafayette. And then we factor in the light breeze at the surface coming out of the east today. That will make it feel like it's 24 right now in Greensburg, 24 in Crawfordsville, 22 in Bloomington, and in the teens in some of our northern viewing area. Now, Future Track 13 does show a quiet start this morning. We'll start to see some clouds moving in, but really it will be a beautiful uh, winter-like day, despite the fact that we're still in fall. Temperatures will only climb into the upper 30s, and those wind chill values, as I was mentioning to Jeremy, will still be in the low 20s, with winds out of the east from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Of course, the Colts taking on the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland today, and it is going to be fantastic weather for football weather and an even better weather for Cleveland for this time of year. Normally they're seeing cloudy skies and snowy conditions. At kickoff, the air temperature will be around 37 degrees. Notice though it will be a bit breezy with winds out of the northeast from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Later on this evening, the clouds will continue to thicken up and we'll see the wind starting to turn out of the south-southwest during the overnight hours. So temperatures not as cold as what they are this morning. We'll see them falling into the low 30s. Still a bit of a wind chill, though. The wind chill values will likely be running in the low 20s throughout the morning hours with that low of 32 degrees. And we are tracking some rain that will start to push in by mid morning. So, looking here at Future Track 13, 7 a.m., we have a cold front that will start to move in. That will bring in some light precipitation. Not expecting any heavy rainfall out of this, but uh, we'll likely see it crossing the Indiana border around 12 noon tomorrow. And as it moves across the area, Again, not heavy rainfall, but still could put a damper on parts of your day tomorrow. And then we'll see that moving on out of here by late afternoon, possibly even a few snow showers by Monday evening, but it'll be very light at best.
Temperatures tomorrow climbing to 38 degrees in Peru, 38 in Lafayette, 42 degrees in Greencastle, 40 degrees in Rushville. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. High 39 degrees for today, down to 32 tomorrow morning, 41 on Monday, and a few light showers possible, and a few light snow showers possible Monday night. And then flurries possible Tuesday. It will be cold for a few days, 36 degrees on Tuesday, 35 on Wednesday. Then a slow warming trend moves in towards the weekend. Jeremy? All right, thanks so much, Kelly. There's no place like home for the holidays, but of what if you're looking to sell yours or buy one? Here with some helpful tips is real estate expert Greg Cooper. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. A lot of people think maybe by between Thanksgiving and Christmas it's going to be a tough time to do anything mm -hmm. as far as selling a home. What do you say about that? You know, in any seasonal change, and we talked about this at the beginning of October, Jeremy, if you have an inner Clark Griswold or a, an inner Cousin Eddie and you feel compelled to cover your home with holiday decor, then this probably isn't the right time of the year for you. But if you can do things in moderation, and you can make it very tasteful and subtle, this could be a real opportunity for people who want to sell their homes right now. And so, speaking of that, I mean, should people, if they want to sell their house, should they dress it up a little bit and put some lights and put some decorations? Absolutely fine to do that. The most important thing to remember is that when home buyers come in your property, and there are plenty of home buyers out there right now, they're looking to see themselves in your home. So you want the home to feel warm and intimate, but you don't want to distract them from being able to picture themselves there. And what about uh, scheduling, you know, open houses and things like that? It can be a challenging time because uh, people are busy. You know, they're seeing relatives and things like that. How do you go about that now? Well, as a home seller, you want to make sure you do your diligence on anyone who asks to see your home to make sure that they have an immediacy in their purchasing interest. In other words, folks who are thinking about selling, excuse me, thinking about buying in the spring, they may not necessarily be people you want to have in in the month of December. You want to have the real urgent home buyers in. So that requires a little due diligence just because time is so important for everybody right now. Now, we haven't had any issues this winter so far, knocking on wood, but weather, obviously, the month of December, Kelly and I have been talking about this, any day now we could have yeah. a snowstorm or something like that. So it's a can, can be a challenge. Yeah, well, you know, if we have the winter of 2011 into 2012, the Super Bowl winter, we're all going to be very happy, and it's a great time for home sellers and home buyers as well. But if we have the winter of 2013, like we had a year ago, it's going to be a very slow time to try and sell a home, and for home buyers getting out to look as well. And I always ask you this when I see, is it a buyer's market right now? Is it a seller's market right now? Have things changed a little bit? If the home is a really perfect match, for what the marketplace is and for the demands that buyers are looking for, it can be a seller's market. In general, the market is pretty balanced right now with the exception of the upper end price points where there's a little bit more of a buyer's market mentality. For the most part, it's pretty balanced right now. And not to ask you to look into a crystal ball, but what do you foresee coming up in the spring of 2015? What are we looking at as far as the real estate market? It'll all be dependent upon home mortgage rates and right now they're incredibly advantageous as they have been obviously for the last several years. If that continues, we're going to have a very active of buying and selling season as we get into the spring and, and weather dependent that could continue on through the winter as well as we head toward March, April and May of next year. Excellent. Greg Cooper, thanks so much for joining us. We want to remind everybody our website WTHR.com. They can contact you through that, ask you questions, right. find out what's going on. They can find me on Hot Topics on the Real Estate Update page. They can ask me questions there. We're happy to help. Thank you so much, Greg Cooper, Great for you. joining us today. And playing with some added motivation, the Indianapolis Colts hit the field with something more than another victory to play for. Sports anchor Rich Nye is on the road with the team. He's going to get you ready for kickoff. Also, another heated night of protests around the country after the Eric Garner decision. We're going to let you know what happened, tell you about a demonstration that is also happening right here in Indianapolis.
I'm Gary Dick. Coming up at 11 o'clock, we will take a look at a first of its kind study in Indiana on the impact of government regulation on poverty and entrepreneurship in the state. Does it hinder young, small startups from getting going? An IUPUI economist conducted the study, and he says especially in rural areas, entrepreneurship can be the great equalizer. It's a chance that people who can't otherwise get into the game, they can start getting into it. And what we need to worry about are then the barriers and things that are erected there to stop them. We will have much more on that study. Plus, the Indiana State Fairgrounds Coliseum has a new corporate naming rights sponsor. We'll be on top of the facility. We'll go inside that deal with Kim Smith, the CEO of Indiana Farmers Insurance. Uh, we'll have that story and a lot more. It's all coming up this morning at 11, right here on Channel 13. A playoff spot and a division title are on the line for the Indianapolis Colts today. An Indy win coupled with a Houston Texans loss that will give the Colts the playoff berth. Our Rich Nye has more from Cleveland, Ohio and the banks of Lake Erie. A strong breeze blowing off Lake Erie in Cleveland, but the forecast for the Colts and Browns Sunday is actually 37 degrees and sunny. Not bad for December. Colts head coach Chuck Pagano began his coaching career here in Cleveland and he says that kind of forecast for December is hard to believe. I don't know in four years if I've ever coached a game from 01 to 04 that ever happened in the month of December. Usually got gray around, I don't know, September. The sun came back out in May. How would you describe that, that dog pound, that flavor of a Cleveland game? Oh, man, it's crazy, man. You know, it's crazy, man. I, you know, you got to love that dog pound, man. There's nothing like it in the NFL, man. NFL world, man. That's, that's probably the closest thing it's going to get to Alabama fans. Trey Richardson is one of four former Browns who will take on his former team on Sunday. Colts cornerback Vontae Davis will not play as he recovers from a concussion. And we'll have a live report on Sunday at 6 o'clock on Eyewitness News from Cleveland. I'm Rich Knight, Channel 13 Eyewitness Sports. All right, thank you, Rich, and we'll hear again from Rich later this morning. He and WTHR.com's Bob Kravitz will break down the matchup in our next half hour of Weekend Sunrise. A big day of fanfare leading up to the Big Ten Championship yesterday. We're going to take you to the game and show you the fun activities that happened beforehand.
Calls for justice reach a fourth straight day nationwide. We'll show you where things got out of hand last night. Also, it's been one year since Eskenazi opened its doors. We'll show you what the hospital has done during its inaugural year to improve patient care. And after a dreary Saturday, we are going to see a much brighter finish to your weekend. We are tracking a chance of rain. I'll have those details coming up. From Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News Weekend Sunrise starts now. And good morning. Welcome to Weekend Sunrise on this Sunday, December 7th. It is 930, 29 degrees. I'm Jeremy Brilliant in for Naomi, along with Kelly Green. And uh, we're looking for a pretty nice day, a sunny day mm -hmm. at least, even if it is uh, a bit chilly, but it is right. December, so it should be. You're right. Absolutely. It's going to be a, a really nice winter-like day with mostly sunny skies today. We are tracking some clouds that have started to filter in, so that is all ahead of an next weather maker that will move in tomorrow. So we'll just enjoy the sunshine for today. Looking at our HD sky cam, downtown Indianapolis, a great start there. Temperatures already starting to respond to that sunshine with temperatures climbing to 29 degrees so far. Winds out of the east northeast at 10 miles per hour. So that is a little bit breezy at this hour, making it feel like it's 20 degrees. Temperatures have been running close to 10, even 12 degrees below what we were yesterday at this time. So certainly an Abrupt start this morning, 29 in Crawford, in, excuse me, in Greensburg, 27 in Marion, 27 in Lafayette, and 29 degrees in Terre Haute at this hour. Now, future track 13 wind chill values so show that wind chill values will likely be in the 20s through the morning hours and climbing into the low, possibly some mid 30s later on this afternoon. So definitely need to dress appropriately, but again, that sunshine will just make things feel better. Temperatures today climbing into the upper 30s. Wind chill values will still be in the low 30s and I am tracking a chance of some rain for tomorrow. I'll have those details coming up in just a few minutes. New on Weekend Sunrise, officials say two police officers were injured in a protest in Berkeley, California. It was held in response to the grand jury decisions not to indict in the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Garner. We're told the protest turned violent when some of the demonstrators threw objects at police. As you can see by this video, police use tear gas and smoke grenades as a way to break up the crowd. Officials say the protesters also smashed windows and several businesses were looted. There have been no reports of any arrests at this point. And there continue to be calls for justice all across the nation. As NBC's Dan Shinneman explains, those protests are now expanding to include other controversial cases. I can't breathe! Hey, I can't breathe! From Manhattan? A lot of us people of color feel like there's a pattern, and we just want to voice our concern about that and let that be known. No justice, no peace. To Marietta, Georgia. The cause is to get the, the public to understand that we have some issues that we have to fix as a society. Thousands took to the streets Saturday, a fourth straight day of demonstrations. Black Lives The refrain that's grown familiar, echoing from Hollywood to Houston, justice, no peace. to the suburbs of New York, where on Friday, marchers had a message. Their concerns extend far beyond what happened to Eric Gardner and Ferguson's Michael Brown. We can talk about Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. that was shot in, in the White Plains Projects, E.J. Henry that was shot. Cases like in Cleveland, where a grand jury has been impaneled after 12-year-old Tamir Rice was shot and killed by police after brandishing what turned out to be an air pistol. His family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the officer and the city. And in Brooklyn, where a grand jury will hear evidence in the killing of Aka Gurley, an unarmed 28-year-old shot by an officer. Grand jury, you must indict. But many are now questioning that grand jury system. The system itself is clearly problematic and ridden with conflicts when it comes to investigating police officers. As demonstrations in many cities across the country grow. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. And Indianapolis will join the calls for justice, peace, and change today. An All Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter rally will take place at the Julia Carson Government Center. That's at 3 p.m. today. Everyone is invited, including police officers, pastors, and political leaders. It has been one year since one of the city's largest hospitals opened its doors for the first time. Here's Weekend Sunrise reporter Kerry Klein with more on how employees are reflecting on this first year. This beautiful facility was years in the making, but thanks to a generous donation from Sydney and Lois Eskenazi, it has finally become a reality. It's celebrating its one-year birthday with plenty of milestones. But first, let's go back to the day of labor and delivery. A year ago, on a cold 
bitter morning, very similar to this one. Teams of doctors and nurses labored to carefully deliver about 150 patients from the old Wishard Hospital to the new Eskenazi. After just a few hours of labor, that delivery was complete, and this hospital has been growing ever since. The hospital says it has seen a big increase in patients, particularly in births, with a 25% increase in babies delivered there. But they're also seeing the positive effects of their many support programs like art, music, even the Sky Farm on top of the building, producing fresh produce for patients and staff. And all of that is just the beginning. I get letters all the time uh, about you know, expressing appreciation for the private rooms, the, uh, the fact that it's very comfortable now for families and loved ones to be able to stay and support uh, those who are in the hospital. We have comfortable uh, places to, for them to, uh, to sit and sleep uh, at the bedside. Our nurses love, probably the, the, oh, what I hear most is how they love how quiet it is. The hospital has been great the greatest hospital that I've ever been in, that the people, the, the way they are taking care of me. So this hospital in the last year has seen an increase in inpatient care and trauma care and burn center patients. And also we talked about that whopping 25% in labor and delivery. And Eskenazi Hospital says they're looking forward to even more growth and you're too. Reporting from downtown, Carrie Klein, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Carrie. Ohio State University fans are waking up happy this morning after a definitive victory in last night's Big Ten championship game. Buckeye fans outnumbered Badger fans by a wide margin, and the team thanked their supporters by delivering a thorough beatdown of Wisconsin at Lucas Oil Stadium. Third string quarterback Cordell Jones stepped up big time, throwing three touchdown passes, leading Ohio State to the 59 to nothing route. And afterwards, they got to lift the hardware they had never won before the Big Ten Championship trophy, and now Coach Urban Mayer and his team must wait to see if they impress the College Football Playoffs Committee enough to get into the Final Four. TCU and Baylor also won yesterday, leaving the committee with the unenviable task of having to decide which of the three is most worthy to play for the national title. Two, one, and before the players took to the field last night, a different type of sporting event played out on Georgia Street, Major League Eating. St. Elmo's world-famous and extremely spicy shrimp cocktail was the dish of choice for the second annual championship. Some of the world's top professional eaters went head-to-head -head trying to devour as much as possible in just eight minutes. Top-ranked Joey Chestnut defended his title, even set a world record eating a whopping 10.4 pounds, 10.4 pounds of shrimp cocktail. Take a look before the pros took to the stage. One of our own, Jason Spells there, battled it out with some of the other local contestants. And the welcome mat was laid out for the thousands of people attending yesterday's events downtown. Eyewitness News reporter Kevin Rader gives us a little taste. That forced him to scramble. The sound of football is in the air. Fans from Ohio State and Wisconsin are fanning those flames. You ready? You want to buy me a beer? I will, I will, I'll take a beer. Sure. Let's go. All right. All right. Let's go, man. I'm ready. I was trying to hold off. Don't do it. I was trying to hold off till 11, but so much for that. As the Wisconsin Badgers made their way through the convention center toward Lucas Oil Stadium, fans outside were sharing camaraderie that only comes prior to kickoff. They may disagree on the game tonight, but they agree on Indianapolis. It's not snowing and it's not raining. What more do you want? Yeah. I don't have to wear a parka. I'm happy. Just a nice place. Everybody's like welcoming. It's like, hey, you know what? No matter what team you're from, everybody's really hospitable. It's like, hey, you know, it's all about, you know, sports and having a good time. Man. Melvin Gordon for the Heisman. Badger fans are just as impressed with Indy. The facilities are downtown, the restaurants, you don't need a car, everything's walkable. It's fabulous. Everybody's it's just, polite, everybody's, everybody's really nice. People, yeah. They have all come to watch their team hoist the Amos Alonzo Stag Championship trophy. But they're willing to work in some Big Ten trivia, little agility drills, and even a 40-yard dash. Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney says he's excited Indianapolis will continue to host this title tilt through 2021. Tremendous facilities, but also it's a turnkey operation. 
that people here really know how to go after events. They really know how to, you know, welcome guests, welcome teams, welcome coaches, and uh, you know the uh, uh, the intimacy and the connectivity of the community mm -hmm. and the venues uh, makes it really uh, a good place. That will give some seven more years oh. to work on that 40 ton. Kevin Rader, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And that decision by the Big Ten means the first 11 conference championship games will be played right here in Indianapolis. And they had a nice day to get out there and be out and about in downtown yesterday. Yes. Today should be a decent day as well. Oh, absolutely. We're going to see a lot of sunshine, dry conditions, a little bit of a breeze out there. But we have another system that will bring us a chance of rain. I'll have those details coming up. Also, head making sure no one goes hungry this holiday season. Coming up, we'll introduce you to a group that's filling the stomachs and much more of the less fortunate. Good morning. Anger and disbelief across the country after a grand jury decides not to indict a police officer in a chokehold death. Is the criminal justice system simply failing African Americans? Plus, the fight within the GOP over how to combat the president on immigration. How far will Republicans go to block President Obama's executive action? And how rich is your member of Congress? I'm going to break down just how Washington politicians are doing well while many of you continue to tread water. All of that's coming up right here on Meet the Press. A gift from the congregation at New Life Worship Center on the near northwest side. Hundreds of people got enough food yesterday to prepare several meals, but that's not all they got. 
I know it's 11 o'clock in the morning, but I came to have a party in Jesus. There's no doubt a box of food will help. It means a lot, actually. But here at New Life Worship Center, they're getting nourished, both physically and spiritually. So God, we just thank you for the blessing that you have. A thousand people will leave with a box filled with staples. Let her be blessed, oh God. And a heart overflowing with prayer. It is my way of giving back. That's what I can do today. That's what I wanted to do today. Hundreds of volunteers made this happen. Happy holidays. Including Indiana Fever star Tamika Ketchings, who is here representing her foundation, but this is also her church. But it's awesome to be able to come out here and be able to give. But that's wild. <laughs> and they're giving to those who need it most. It's hard out here right now. It's hard. It's hard. Everybody's going through it right now. And so, you know, this type, this type of stuff makes it easier. It makes it a little bit easier. Got one more. So, okay, no right. doubt, the food will help. Good? Good. Okay. All right, all right. I got a smile on my face. My heart feels good. I got some prayer, you know, and can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Jesus, man. Amen. 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 But the spiritual nourishment may be just as important. You know he does, right? I know he does. You know he's <laughs> can't go wrong with that. In addition to New Life, contributions were also made by the NCAA, LESEA, Global Feed the Hungry, and the Catch the Stars Foundation. Well, in case you missed it, James Franco was the host of last night's Saturday Night Live. The cast poked fun of, at this week's live Peter Pan musical. Franco did his own version of Christopher Walken's less than intimidating Captain Hook. Take a look. Oh, no, Peter, look. Here comes Captain Hook. Well, hello there. It's me, Captain Hook. <laughs> the most terrifying pirate in all of Never, never Land. Boo. And don't miss next week's episode when Lord of the Rings star Martin Freeman hosts with musical guest Charlie XCX. You can catch it right here on Channel 13 next Saturday night right after the night beat. You probably didn't stay up and watch I it, did, did not. I missed the episode. Yeah, I missed it too. Hmm, I wonder why we <laughs> missed it. Anyway, uh, a fun time there on Saturday Night Live. Uh, it should be a really nice day, mm -hmm. nice and sunny. Yeah, a great day to really get out and maybe do some of the Christmas shopping that you need to do, run some errands. It should be a nice afternoon. We are seeing a few high clouds streaming in ahead of the next weather maker, but we will enjoy a dry day today, but tomorrow a little bit different story. We're tracking a system a clipper that will move across the Great Lakes, bring in a cold front into the area. We're not talking widespread rain like we saw on Friday, but a few showers here and there. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But let's take in all this blue sky from our Sharpsville weather bug cam. A great start there. And it definitely was a chilly start this morning. Temperatures dropped into the low to mid 20s in many locations. We're now at 29 degrees in Indianapolis with winds out of the east northeast 10 miles per hour. Bit of a wind chill, feels like it's 20 degrees. And temperatures have been running about 10 degrees below what we did yesterday at this hour. Nine degrees cooler right now in Lebanon than yesterday at this hour. Nine as well in Lafayette. So definitely a cool start this morning. It is currently 28 in Marion, 30 degrees in Greensburg, 30 degrees in Bloomington. And wind chill values still running in the teens in some locations. So that is significant this morning. And we are going to see the wind chill values likely in the low 30s today, but guess what? We'll take in all this sunshine this afternoon. A few high clouds build in, and then as we head into the later hours today, more clouds will also filter in as well. But brighter afternoon than yesterday with temperatures climbing into the upper 30s to near 40 degrees, and wind chill values will be in the low 30s. Future Track 13 tonight showing the clouds thickening back up again. The winds will start to turn out of the south-southwest, keeping it pretty mild overnight, only falling into the low 30s by tomorrow morning. And uh, that's actually a few degrees above average for this time of year. And we'll see uh, a chance of some of those rain showers by mid-morning. So let's take a look here at Future Track 13. Starting the timeline at 7 a.m., this cold front will be pretty weak as it starts to move into central Illinois. And then as we head into the late morning hours, close to 12 noon, we'll start
start to see some of that precipitation moving in. The good news is it should be just rain at this point. As that cold front moves across the Indiana border around 12 noon, it'll move across central Indiana, Indianapolis area, likely around 2, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And again, only talking about a tenth, maybe two tenths of an inch of rain out of this system. And then on the back side of that system, we may see a few light snow flurries. High temperatures tomorrow climbing to 42 degrees in Indianapolis, 38 in Peru, 42 in Greencastle, 43 in Nashville, and 39 degrees the high in Richmond. And for today, Beautiful afternoon, lots of sunshine, much better than yesterday, high of 39 degrees, down to 32 tomorrow morning, few light showers possible Monday morning, you'll want to check back with Chuck on sunrise, high of 41 degrees Monday afternoon, possibly a few light snow showers late Monday night, a few flurries possible on Tuesday, cold for Wednesday, sunny and dry though, high of 35, and a gradual warming trend moves in as we head through the weekend. All right, well, the countdown to Christmas is on, so do you have your tree yet? Trees were on sale yesterday at the 14th Annual Christmas Tree Sale at the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. A fifth grade class planted the first trees back in 1993 with plans to use the money their senior year to help pay for prom, guest speakers, and a senior trip. In the first year the trees were up for sale, they made about 400 bucks. Last year they brought in 6000 All of the money raised yesterday goes to the school's activity fund. Well, dozens of young racing fans kicked off the holiday season with some of their favorite drivers. The IMS Kids Club held its fourth annual end-of-the-year Christmas party. Santa was there with his reindeer greeting children at the Delara IndyCar Racing Factory. Also making an appearance, Scott Dixon, Sarah Fisher, and Pippa Mann. It's another great way that the Speedway out here at IMS is so connected to the local community. And it's so important for us to reach these kids because, you know, they're going to be our next generation of IndyCar fans. And besides their visit with Santa and Pippa, kids also enjoyed an inflatable slide, face painting, and lots of other holiday activities. Well, the Colts are in Cleveland, and so are Rich Nye and Bob Kravitz. Here they are with a look at what's coming up next in sports. The Colts and the Browns today in Cleveland. Bob, let's hope the Colts don't have a mistake by the lake. You know, I lived here for four years. I'm glad I left. <laughs> you know, it's a great town. It really is. But you don't see the sun for months on end. It's cold, it's windy, it's brutal, it's Cleveland. We're supposed to see the sun today, and hopefully a Colts win. We'll have a preview coming up.
Hello from Cleveland, standing next to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and behind us, First Energy Stadium, where today the Colts take on the Cleveland Browns. And next to me is rock star Bob Kravitz. They Nick, Nick Jagger, I prefer. <laughs> they tell us 37 degrees and sunny today. Uh, I guess we should appreciate that for December. Well, look, you know, I've lived here, I lived here for four years and didn't see the sun once. Okay, so until I actually see the sun, I ain't going to believe it. And I guess we're not going to see Johnny Manziel, at least not at the start of the game today. No, I think uh, that Brian Hoyer is going to be on a very short leash. I think the fans here are very impatient. I think if he starts out slow, we may see Johnny Manziel as soon as the second quarter. And unfortunately, we're also not going to see Vontae Davis for the Colts. That's a big loss, isn't it? Well, he's a Pro Bowl cornerback. Uh, uh, receivers are only catching the ball. I think quarterbacks, their rating against Vontae Davis is 41.7 has not allowed a touchdown all season long. It's going to have to be a big day for Gordy, for Butler, and for Toller. The Colts could clinch a playoff spot today if they get some help from Jacksonville. This is a game, though, that the Colts should win, right? I think they should win it. I mean, you know, uh, Cleveland can't keep up with them on the scoreboard, I don't believe. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, if they can hold Cleveland to under 21 to 23 points, the, the, the Colts ought to win this game, don't you think? I think so. I mean, and I think the we type should, of game they ought to win. I think we should go inside and warm up as Let's well. Let's do it. <laughs> Bob Kravitz, WGHR.com. I'm Rich Knight. We'll have Colts coverage for you tonight live from First Energy Stadium at 6 o'clock. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. It is 957, 29 degrees. They're looking for a little bit of sunshine in Cleveland. Right. I think we're going to be sharing some of that sunshine. Yes, they will have a little bit of that breezy wind that we had yesterday mm -hmm. out of the northeast. So there will definitely be a bite to the air in Cleveland here as well, but not as breezy. Temperatures will still be climbing to near 40 degrees this afternoon. More sunshine, that just makes it feel better anyway. Wind chill values will be in the low 30s this afternoon. Later on tonight, temperatures fall to 32 degrees. We do have some light rain in the forecast for tomorrow as a cold front moves through. Not a lot of rain, maybe a tenth of an inch at best. Many locations will likely stay dry tomorrow. High of 41 degrees and we may have a few light snow flurries Monday night and then during the day on Tuesday, especially in our northeastern viewing area on Tuesday. Some lake enhanced snow showers possible. Cool for a couple of days and then we have a gradual warming trend towards the weekend. All right, so feel like December at least. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks so it. much, Kelly. And thank you for watching. For Kelly Green, I'm Jeremy Brilliant. Have a great day, everyone. Remember, you can always see what's going on at WTHR.com.